Tofo, Koso Tofo Noa. My name's Sue and I'm from Dunedin Public Libraries and really, really very happy and pleased to be able to host this session of the New Zealand Children's and Young Adults Book Awards, where we get to celebrate the work and the nomination of Kimberly Andrews, mm -hmm. who has been nominated for the Russell Clark Award for her book, Moose the Pirate. And I'm not going to say anything more at this point. I'm going to hand the time over to Kimberly so we can enjoy her workshop. Thank you, Kimberly. It's really exciting to be here today. Kia ora Sue and kia ora koutou to everyone out there. Thank you so much for that warm introduction. As you have just heard, my name is Kimberly Andrews and I am an illustrator and an author. And today I'm here to talk to you in your schools out there, everyone in classrooms, um, about how I illustrated Moose the Pilot, which is this book up here that I've been shortlisted luckily for, for the Russell Clark Award. Um, so you may know me from Moose the Pilot. You may also know me from a few other books, and I've actually got a bunch of them here today. So I thought I would talk about a few more of them as well. The first one that began the Moose the Pilot idea was actually Puff and the Architect. So some of you may know this book. And it's also been starting to be translated into all different languages. So here it is in Chinese, which is pretty cool. And I also worked on Hound the Detective and the new one, Goose the Artist. So those are a few of um, the Puff and the Architect series. You may also know that I was luckily working with Joy Cowley on a book called Song of the River. So I did this a few years ago. This was my very first book I worked on called Tuna and Hiroa or Tuna Rawako Hiroa. Um, and I was the illustrator for that one. And then I also worked on a few other books with Scholastic, a different publishing company, Ming's Iceberg and Ernie and the Magic Kennel. So I've been quite busy, which has been really fun. And I've worked with a lot of different um, publishers. So that's always quite a, a neat experience. Um, so I'll just put Moose back up there so we can look at him because we're going to be talking about him today. Um, and also what I'm focusing on today is how I create my art, which is what I've been shortlisted for. And I thought it might be interesting for you guys to get a little snapshot of where I create my work and what tools I use. So you might be able to see behind me, I'm in a bit of a plywood house. This is actually my tiny house that I live in with my two daughters and my husband. So I'll take you on a tour. It doesn't take long. This is the lounge down here. <laughs> you might be able to see a little cupboard. That's where my bed pulls out. Pretty fun. I'll spin you around. And that is the rest of the house. It's that small. So behind me is my kitchen and down the end is my toilet and shower and bathroom. And so this is where I do all of the work to create these books. And I also use a pretty fun tool called an iPad. I'm sure a lot of you have experience with iPads and know about them. And this is how I do all my illustrations. So they are digitally done and I use a trusty pencil. So if you guys have a pencil and paper, you can do pretty much exactly what I'm doing, but I'm gonna show you a little bit of digital work that I do. So I'm not sure if that's gonna show up, but I'll angle it a little bit and I can show you that with this fancy little pencil, I can do some amazing painting and marks. So that is how I do most of my work. And then I often bring it into the computer and touch it up there and create my books. So without further ado, I'm going to take you into my workshop on how I created the illustrations for Moose the Pilot. Okay, so how I illustrate Moose the Pilot with me, Kimberly Andrews and Moose the Pilot. <laughs> so this is me. I look a little bit different because I've got my pufflings around me. So these are my puffin and two pufflings. And they are my buddies that really started off my career. As you know, I've just showed you that book. So that's my self-portrait with my friends. And then this is the house where I'm in right now. So you've just had a tour inside and you can see my painting of the outside. So I made this painting when my house was brand new and I was very proud of it. <laughs> um, 
So it's actually a tiny house, which means it's, it's much smaller than normal small houses. It's pretty fun and pretty inventive. And it actually inspired Puff and the Architect. So I had all these cool ideas about different ways that architects could make small houses. And that's what made my first book. And I thought it might be cool for you guys to have a little version of my um, house in plan from Puff and the Architect. So she nicely drew up this little cross section for me to show you where my hidden bed is. So you know how I just showed you before there is a little cupboard? Well, if you look underneath that lounge, up in that top container, that is where my bed sneaks out from. So it rolls out on wheels and it clicks nice and safely. And then downstairs, you can see that I work, um, sometimes work in the studio downstairs stairs and do my illustrating, but that has now largely become my daughter's little playroom. So we'll move on. So as I said, Puff and the Architect really started everything off for me. And I luckily have been able to produce a full series of books centering around Puff and the Architect. And I do both the illustrating and the words, which has been really fun. But today we're focusing on moose. So let's dig in. This is the very first illustration, one of actually my very first digital illustrations I ever did. And it was a little holiday um, fun game with my nephews. They were down one, one holiday and we were joking around about what would be the coolest treehouse we could possibly imagine. And they gave me their ideas and their list of what they wanted in the treehouse. And so when they went home again, I drew this up on my computer and sent it up to my nephew. And I said, is this the treehouse you guys were after? And they both exclaimed, yes, that's it. And so actually, if we move to the next slide, you can see that I used that exact treehouse basically for the page that's in the original Puff and the Architect book. So it all came from that one little nugget of an idea with my nephews about what makes a cool treehouse. And so then from Puff and the Architect, I knew that I had this predefined treehouse that um, Moose lived in and I kind of knew what job he'd do because he's a pilot. You can see the plane down there. So that gave me a lot of um, really cool parameters to work within when I was working on Moose the pilot. And I knew that I wanted to combine the character of Moose. So you can see this is the very first drawing I ever did of Moose and it's in a, in a notebook with just a plain old pencil and I worked him up. And then he's inspired by my real life brother. So my brother Cam is a real life bush float plane pilot. And he works in the high up in the north of the Canadian Rockies um, in Canada. And he is flying the exact plane that Moose the pilot flies. So it's a beaver, beaver um, float plane. And I wanted to combine that idea of my nephew's dream treehouse. So this will now lead us into my illustration process. So I'm gonna show you an example of how I would work up a whole illustration. And the illustration that we're gonna work on is actually from Moose the Pilot. I'll show you the page. So if you can see here, that front page is actually the title page or page number one. Um, and I am gonna show you how I make it. So let's click through. Here you go. Here's the illustration that we're going to work through. And I, what I've done is I've recorded my process of making it on an iPad so that you can all um, see the, the steps that it takes to get to that point. So let's see. Oh, and the tools that I use. So that's right. I was going to show you a little um, snippet of painting on the iPad. So you can see here, I've got all sorts of different layers. I think I've got about 34 layers there. Um, and that shows all the different ways that I've built up this illustration that you're gonna see now um, once I press play on this video. So sometimes my more um, complicated illustrations in Puffin um, books can get up to three or 400 layers. So it can be quite intense <laughs> and quite confusing. So let's press play. Time to draw. That's what we're going to do now. So the first step when making my illustrations is sketching. And these can be super rough. This is a pencil drawing on the iPad. And you can see I'm probably using a reference image of a beaver float plane. And I'm just doing really rough um, circles and rectangles just to get the idea of the composition of the um, 
illustration in my head. And this is all just really loose and rough with a pencil. And the beauty of working on an iPad is you can resize things and erase things really easily, but you can also do that on paper and pen. So once I've got my um, rough drawing, I then set the whole drawing to a peg. I'll just pause this video so you can see. I've really brought down the, um, the opacity of that under drawing so that then I can draw over the top and make a really clean drawing. And you can do this with tracing paper. So maybe you use your rough drawing and then you put it on a window or a light box and trace over it. That's basically what I'm doing here with a really nice pencil line over the top. And I'm just going over everything and making it kind of neat. I don't like things too tidy um, with my drawings, but I do like to have a nice neat layer to begin the painting process with. So you can see I'm working on Moose's um, details and his flannel shirt and all the little details that um, make up this character. So the next step is color blocking. So I'm just going to pause it again. Um, so what I've done now is I've taken away that rough layer of my very first sketching line. And all I've left is my um, nice clean pencil line. And now I go with an iPad around all the different shapes to make um, a color block of each element. So I'll press play again, and you'll see that I'll start blocking out all the different elements in the illustration. And this is just with plain color, nice and simple, blocking out the sky and the ocean. And this allows me to then paint within these areas. And we're just working on painting now. So the next step is the fun part, really. So you can see I'm working up the sky here and adding in some clouds and details of ocean and water. I really love um, the watercolor texture that I can get from the iPad and from my computer pencils. Um, it's, it's really close to the true medium. And you can see here, I've just added all the different colors and now I'm starting to build up the moose's fur and details of his um, character and this plaid shirt that I sillily chose, which has made it very complicated on every illustration I've ever done of Moose. You have to go through all these different plaid lines, which has been quite fun. And then adding in the detail of the logo on the dock for the Bush Pilot dock, adding in the text, and then shading, starting to add in different textures of watercolor, the wood texture, bringing it slowly to life, um, slowly and surely. And then where are we at now? Oh yes, adding detail on the wooden sign for Moose's Bush Pilot Lake Dock. <laughs> and then adding all the fur onto the moose. And now the next step is the shading. And this is where the illustration really starts to take on a bit of life of its own. So what I do is I add a layer on top of an illustration and I set it to multiply. So if anyone uses Photoshop or Procreate on the iPad, you can set layers to multiply. And this basically means that they, they float down onto the layers and add, add a sort of see-through shading. And this is really satisfying because you know that you've got your illustration at a good point and you're just really adding the finishing touches and you need to know where the light is coming from. So in this um, case, the light is coming from above the plane. And then the final step to make this illustration complete is lighting. And you can see I'm starting to add on these really bright lines of light. Um, and this is, yeah, this is probably the most satisfying part because it really means the illustration is it's pretty much done. And I feel like that just really pulls it right to life. So now Moose feels like he's really popping off the page. So that is about three minutes 20 of recording, which actually took me probably about 45 minutes. So it's, it's not real time, but it, it's cool to look at it in that um, quick time. So now that we've seen how I do one illustration, I thought it would be quite interesting to show you the process of actually illustrating the full book. Um, because it's not just um, illustrating one illustration after the other. So first of all, the important thing is character design. And luckily with Moose the Pilot and the other spin-offs of the Puff and the Architect series, I've had, I've already had the character design done because I've done it for the first book. But when I do design a um, character, I like to use real reference photos. 
I think it's really useful um, and people often don't realize that when you're drawing cartoons of animals or caricatures, um, it's often really useful to have a basis in the, um, in the natural form of the animal. So moose, if you see here, the reference photos of moose, they're hilarious. They've got giant noses and flappy lips and these incredible antlers. Um, so they're really, they're really easy to draw um, in a sort of comical way. But having that biological basis to your drawings, um, I think allows them to be, yeah, more believable, even if they're doing things like standing on two legs and flying a plane, which I don't think moose could probably do. So once I've got those reference photos, again, I do a lot of sketching and I do these by hand, often on my iPad, but also in notebooks. Um, and you can see this is the very first sketch of Moose the Pilot. And I did this sketch before I knew about the books. So this was just an idea. Um, and importantly, I had a tip from a, a well-known illustrator, Leo Timmers, who told me to make sure that you draw your characters both side on, three quarters and straight on. So then that allows you to create a continuity throughout your book. So you can, you can really get to know your character if you know them from all different sides. And it means that they're not just always drawn face on. You can um, change the way you look at these characters and it, it really does bring them to life. So I actually referenced this image a lot when I was drawing both Moose the Pilot and Puff and the Architect um, using different ways. And then just an interesting aside, um, when we were first planning Puff and the Architect with the publisher Penguin Random House, they actually suggested that maybe the, the pilot character should be Goose. Um, and so I actually ended up having to go right through and um, make a character reference for Goose the pilot. But in the end, we felt that Moose the pilot was funnier. So we went with um, Moose the pilot. And now Goose has her very own book, Goose the Artist, which is pretty fun. So storyboard is next after character design. Character design. Um, and storyboard is a really crucial part of the process. Um, when you're trying to design a whole book, I find it really useful to do this, which is print out an A4 page or have this A4 page on my iPad. Um, and each box in this image that you can see in front of you represents a full double spread of the book. Um, and then I can, I can work through visually the book all in one page and see how it's going to flow. Because at the very beginning, I really don't know what's going to be on each page. I know the story, but visually it's nice to sort of lay it out and think, okay, so this might be a good place for an aerial shot, or this might be a good time to insert a map. So this is how I planned out um, Miss the Pilot, and this is the exact document that I used to make to make the book and it looks really scratchy I'm sure to you and it probably is really hard to understand but to me that is a lot of information right there and I can tell exactly what I wanted to do so once I've written down that information I then do an even scratchier storyboard of possible thumbnail designs so you can see there's all sorts of scribbles something that looks kind of like a cockpit to me but probably doesn't look like anything to you but this really helps me to plan out my book and it allows me to see how the whole thing flows. So once I've got that storyboard really rough, the next stage is what we call roughs. <laughs> so rough illustrations. And these are um, called roughs because the, the publisher and the editor and the designer don't want you to spend too much time and um, effort on them, they're, they, they're just a rough indication of how the book will work. Um, so you can see here, this is a black and white rough illustration of one of the first pages in Moose the Pilot where Moose meets Bear um, at the beehives. And these are really important stages in the book um, production because they allow you to, to play around with where the characters will be, where the text will sit, um, and this allows the book designer then to work on the book and make sure there's no glaring problems before you go to final art. And basically we want to make sure that everything's really polished and refined before I move to the final illustration. Because as you've seen, it does involve quite a lot of work and a lot of layers and a lot of time. Um, sometimes a final illustration can take, you know, a few days to weeks. So you wanna make sure you've got it right. And this is the stage that you can do that. 
Um, and an important note to think about here on these roughs is if you divide that using your eyes, if you divide that illustration in two, that's where the spine of the book will be. So that's when you open up the book and you have the line where the pages are connected. You don't want anything important in that, in that gap. Um, so that's why I've got no characters in the middle and I've got no text in the middle. So this is something that I've learned the hard way by putting some main characters in the middle. And when they get printed, you just don't see them, they get stuck. And that's why it's called in um, publishing terms, it's called the gutter. So you don't want anything in that gutter. So that's a really important um, step with rough designs. And you use black and white. So people often wonder why you don't go straight into color illustration when you're planning. Color is actually a really hard thing to get right. Um, and takes a lot of mental energy to think about a color palette for an illustration. And just working in black and white makes, makes a lot more room in your brain to be more creative about your composition and your characters and what the characters look like, not what the, not what the colors are. Um, so that's why we work in black and white. You can see here another rough, um, and I'm just pointing out that you can make sure that the characters are in their correct position. Here's another black and white rough. And this is where I also test out lighting. Um, and lighting is a really important, as you've seen in my illustration, lighting is really important to my style. Um, I love shading and lighting and making sure I know where the sun or the light source is in each page. Um, and this is a really good place to test that out. And you can see that they are really rough, like these drawings aren't pristine, but they're enough to get us across the um, impression I want to show for the editor and the book designer. And as a reference I used for drawing the planes, I used my brother's um, paper plane model that he had hanging from his roof as a child. And I grabbed it down and I thought, oh, what a cool thing. So I used to hold it up in all different um, directions and take photos just with my phone, no, nothing fancy. And then I would pull those images into my iPad and trace over these references. So I could make sure that I got the plane wingspans correct all the angles correct. And these are things that you can use in your work. You can take photos of your brother or sister doing something funny and goofy and sketch it and, and copy it and um, really get you know a, a reference working for you. I often take photos of my daughters or my husband and they end up being characters in my book. So it's a really cool way of doing something that's quite unique to you. So I thought that would be an interesting spot to show you. And now, we move on to the final art. So this is the stage when all of those roughs have been sent off to the publisher and the editor and everyone's happy with them. The book designer has placed them all in her final file and she is happy with you to um, progress to final art. And so often when I'm working on final art, I will have a color palette on one screen or one part of my um, laptop. And this is what it looks like. So I always have this file up or either minimize down below, but I always bring it up when I'm using my color. Um, and as you can see, I've put my reference image of Moose the Pilot's original treehouse there. And so I can maintain the color of all the elements in the book all the way through. So um, you can see that I've got little color swatches just above the moon of this illustration. There's a tan, a brown, a dark brown, and then there's another few browns and a red and a blue. These are all the colors that Moose uses in every single illustration. So I've got his fur color, his dark fur color, and then the red of his plaid shirt and the blue stripe that occurs in his blue shirt, in his plaid shirt, sorry. And this just allows me to, to make sure that that is continuous throughout the whole book. Um, so he always looks the same. He always has that same plaid shirt and that same mouse, um, moosey fur color. And then I use what I call a grid system. So I set up my notebook, at, but the very first day that I start on my final art for my uh, Moose the Pilot illustrations, I set up a big notebook grid. And along the top, you can see I've got numbers, two to three, four to five, six to seven, all the way up to 32. And that's because there are 32 pages in, in a picture book. And so I note down all of my pages that I need to work through. And then on the um, 
on the horizontal axes down the bottom there, you see all the different things that I need to do on every single page. And it seems a bit overwhelming when you see it like this, but this actually allows me to go through systematically every illustration and make sure that I've got everything done. And how I work is I do them one at a time. So if you see on the um, horizontal axis there, I have pencil characters or mid-ground pencil or character paint. I do all the pencil drawings for every single illustration at once. So I'll work through all the pages along the top and doing all the characters pencil. And then when I've done all of those 32, I'll go back and start the next thing, which might be shadows or eyes or vegetation in the background. And this just allows me to make sure, again, it's continuous. Um, it has continuity throughout the book. But because I work in such detail, it also kind of tricks my brain into thinking that I'm, I'm doing quite well and I'm moving through the book quite quickly. Because I think if I went from the very beginning of an illustration to the very end and then had to start another one, it would feel like starting a project every single day. Whereas this way I can just tick along and make sure that I'm slowly working away at the book as a whole. Um, and I've got an example to show you on the next slide of focusing on one of these elements at a time. So for moose, I had to draw all the mooses at one time. <laughs> so this was quite a fun day of making sure I had every single moose the pilot and I painted him all at once. I got quite moose crazy after that, but it just made it way easier. And it meant that they all look the same. They all have their same character and they were all drawn on the same day. So where are we going now? Oh, this is an example of a rough. So I thought we would go from a rough, um, I'll just pause here, we'll go back because I didn't really get to start that. This is a, I was gonna go through the whole process of um, one of the pages in Moose the Pilot from rough to final. And I thought that would be quite cool to show you that. So here we'll start with coming up with the rough idea of this page. So I know that I want to have um, a shop somewhere on this page. So I took a little reference image of a shop that I liked the look of. And then I start bringing in the plane and different elements in the um, shop. And I know that I need my characters. And as you can see here, where I'm pointing uh, in the middle of this illustration, there's a line and that's the gutter. That's my no-go line. I'm not gonna put anything important near that line. And then you see, again, I'm adding in all different elements. And this is where the thinking really happens. I have to think about everything I'm putting into the illustration. I'm thinking about my lighting. Um, and then that black and white rough will head off to the designer. Once they've approved it, that's when I go um, into the um, fine work of you know, making a pencil line. So this is where I've had the approved rough and now I've pulled back the opacity of the background rough illustration and now I'm drawing over it with a fine pencil line. And that will be the um, file that I take forward to make the full illustration. So I'm just going through everything in detail making sure I've got a nice neat drawing of everything. And this can be quite um, quite mindful. I can listen to audiobooks or podcasts at this point because I've done the hard thinking and I'm just now illustrating really and drawing over it. So that's the final pencil drawing. And then the next, oh, sorry. The next bit is the final painting. So this is where I'm blocking in those colors. So you see here, I've got my one layer of pencil drawing, and then I've blocked in a big blue box at the bottom and a big orange box at the top, just roughly indicating where my sea and my sky are. And then I'm working on the clouds and adding in the um, landscape in the background. <laughs> And I work from back to front. So I always make sure that I've got the, um, the background done before I make any more details in the front. So I work from usually the sky and the land first and move back. And then starting to add details of the shop and the details of the characters and then into the shading and then in, eventually into the lighting and that final placement of the text clipboard. So in all of my um, Puffin series books, 
I have an illustrated space for the text. So that is the process of a full illustration from Moose the pilot. And often the very last thing I do in the pr progress of making a picture book like Moose the pilot is the cover. And some people think you do the cover to begin with, but I always leave the cover till the very end um, because that's the time when I know the book the best. I've been immersed in the book's um, feel for months. And so it's the best time to do the cover. Um, and this little video here will show you a sped up version of how I went through my thought process of this cover for Moose. So I get a lot of reference images from the internet, bring them in as sort of inspiration. And then I just started working up different ways that I could possibly have the wording Moose the pilot and where Moose the character might fit um, and adding in some elements from the book. But you never want the illustration to be quite the same as something in the book. It has to have its own, um, own vibe. And then once I've got this really rough idea, um, I send this off to the book designer and she and I work together with the publisher to come up with a really um, marketable cover. And usually it's sort of based on what I've done and ideas they have. And that's where we came up with this. So it's a real team effort. Um, and it needs, the cover really needs to stand out well on a bookshelf to, to be noticed. So it's an important thing to work on. And then all the 32 pages go off to the publisher and my job is almost done. So then they get sent off to, in this case, China, um, to a wonderful publishing house, uh, printing house there. And one day, a few months later, you get a really exciting parcel arrive and it is your very own book. And it's so exciting. I always make sure to take a big sniff of the book um, and hug it and then add it into my series of books that I've started to create. Um, and I feel very happy to be doing the job that I'm doing. And yeah, that was, I hope that that was um, encouraging and educational for you. And I hope that you're able to um, spend some time making, you can make little story dummies and book dummies. So little cut up pieces of paper, or even use that idea of mine, which is this um, storyboard thinking about making a whole story on one page and that's a, a really fun activity to work through and now i think we'll come back to sue and see if we have any questions to talk about thank you um kimberly that's so inspiring to watch that and and i know you speed that process up and it makes it makes it look so simple and easy but it also makes it look quite magical I do have a wee few questions because you talked about you know, your first book and, and Puff and the Architect for this first series and how you'd worked on other people's books as well as the illustrator. Mm -hmm. When did you decide you wanted to be a book illustrator? How did that happen? Oh, good question. I have always loved art. My mum is an artist um, and my dad's a photographer, so I was, I was brought up in a really creative household. And I then went on to study science, um, which was a great foundation for any, any sort of endeavor, I think. But in science and geology and biology particularly, um, you really needed to, it was really useful to visually communicate um, ideas. And so I did a lot of drawing and illustrating in my university degrees. And then when I went on my OE, I went over to the UK and I worked um, for a place called the House of Illustration. So I was obviously into illustration. Um, I always loved books and especially picture books. And I worked for them and that was really inspiring. Their um, main laureate was Quentin Blake. I didn't get to meet him, but it was really cool to be that close to his work. Um, and then when I, met, I moved back to Canada for a little while, I worked in a uh, picture book shop, uh, a bookshop that had a lot of picture books. And I had 12 hour shifts there. So I just spend hours looking at picture books and thinking I could do this. I think I could, I could do this. And I never really thought, um, I never really thought that I would write straight away. I thought that I would illustrate other people's work straight away. Um, so that's where the seed sort of happened. And, um, and, and obviously at some point you moved to New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. 
And yeah, so I did my I did a, a on and off between New Zealand and Canada. My um, parents moved us back from Canada when I was young, and then we went back. And then as an adult, I went back and lived there. But yeah, did my education mostly in New Zealand. And um, so how did you connect to publishers and that, you know, when you actually decided, this is what I want to do? Yeah. How, how did you do that? Because I know that sometimes people will come to the library, um, young people, but also some adults as well and say one day this is what I'd like to do how do I do it yeah Yeah, it's it's um it's a really tricky thing to get into um I I made a little portfolio of things that I wanted to do because I think often the best the best um advice I got was to show work that you want to do you know you don't even if you're good at scientific drawing and you want to be a watercolor artist, you probably don't want to, you know, show your scientific drawing heaps to different um, clients because that's what they'll hire you for. You want to make sure you've got a portfolio of work that you really want to pursue. Um, so often in that case, if you're not published yet, like I wasn't, it's a portfolio of personal personal um, work. So things that you might do, like the one I did with my nephews with um, the treehouse, you have that portfolio, you make a few pieces that you're really proud of. Um, And then certain publishing houses like um, Huya here in Wellington, and I I know Gecko and places like that, they they will have a look at your portfolio once or twice a year, they'll have open times for submissions. And that's how I got um, work. I submitted to what was learning media, so the um, school journals. Back in the day, I submitted to Um, them and I got published illustration jobs through that those jobs are really crucial because even though they were small like you know one-off illustrations for an article in a school journal it meant that I was a a published illustrator and then that you know that helps you leapfrog through other um, things so I think I would suggest that people make a really personal portfolio of things they love even just if it's two or three pieces that they really love and then submitting them to open days of publishers. I know um, Walker in Australia has a a Walker Wednesday where they open up for manuscript submissions. They might have something about illustration submissions as well, but that was how I got started and sort of a lucky break, but a fun break. (laughs) Oh, I would think not so much a lucky break it would be based on um, <laughs> that it's just not going to go oh, oh here's a nice one we'll use that we? <laughs> well I think it's lucky in that I think it is it's sometimes lucky because sometimes they're looking for your style just yeah. at that point because there can be sometimes too many of the same style saturating the market um so that's another thing to look at is always keeping your um, finger on the pulse as to what's happening in the children's book market. Um, and that's where libraries are awesome. I spend most days down in the children's book area of the library, the local library. I, granted, I have a toddler and another little baby, but um, I'm spending time looking at what's what's being published and what styles are in fashion. And you can either go against that and be, you know, completely different to what's happening or try and sort of orient yourself in that direction. How did you make the move from being an illustrator to being a a writer and illustrator, actually being able to do create and the whole book? Yeah, that was, um, yeah, it was a really great move looking back on it. I'm not sure if I was aware of that move when it was happening. Um, But yeah, as I said, I started with Tuna and Hiriwa which was that Huya picture book that got my, that was my first picture book job. Um, And I think I was just, you're you're often waiting, especially in a small industry like picture books in New Zealand, you're you're sort of waiting for jobs to come up. Um, And I was waiting for, you know, you know, those lovely emails that say, would you like to illustrate this book? And in between those times, um, I was just doodling ideas of what I would like to illustrate. Um, and that was, it coincided with the time of me building this tiny home with my husband um, and a group of architects. And so, and we'd just been to a, um, we'd just been on an overseas trip and gone to Iceland and seen puffins. And so it was actually quite, if you look back, it's quite obvious. I saw puffins. I came home and worked with architects to draw, design a house. And then I wrote Puffin the Architect. <laughs> it was, um, 
a bit hilarious if you look backwards in that regard. But the, the manuscript didn't come easily. Um, I, I wrote the ideas down in a notebook and then approached the publisher. Uh, well, I have an agent and she approached publishers with that one sketch of that treehouse from my nephews and this rough idea of a puffin who's an architect. And I had to work with, um, they loved my illustration and they said the story needed work. So I had to work with them to make the story up to the same standard as the illustration. Um, and that was a really valuable, re really valuable um, part of the process. And I feel really lucky that they gave me that time and effort to work with me on it. Um, and I had a, a really helpful, another author that, who helped me work on the writing structure. Um, so that's how it happened. It sort of, it naturally happened because I needed something to do, needed more to illustrate. <laughs> That's wonderful. I did have some other questions here, but in the process of our conversation, you've answered them all. Um, <laughs> I know that I've thoroughly enjoyed um, meeting with you and listening to you and being inspired by what you do. And I'm sure that our students out there in Aotearoa um, who are watching this are being inspired too and I think it's wonderful that you know this blending of um, using pencil on paper and then being mm. able to do exactly the same using an iPad and that's yeah. wonderful you know it's um, that blend of of just pure talent and actually technology and how it all works. Yeah I think that I want to I want to highlight that you don't need that technology to do the work. Um, I'm lucky that I have it, but yeah, if you just, if you do just have the paper and the pencil, you can still get to the point where you'll have, you know, that, that really wonderful seed of an idea. Um, the iPad makes it easier for me, but um, I've spent a lot of time of my, my youth with paper, pencil, watercolor, crayon, whatever I can have. Um, you'll get your idea across enough to show people. And if that's something you want to pursue, you'll get to the point where you can work with technology if you need to. But a lot of people still use um, traditional medium. Okay. Well, thank you, Kimberly. And I think we're probably getting close to the time that we we need to finish, although I could sit here <laughs> and watch your processes and watch your drawing all day. Oh, thank and, you. But thank you very much. And I want to wish you, and I'm sure everybody who's watching and enjoying this workshop we all want to wish you the very very best of luck and um, <laughs> best wishes and the um the russell clark award and the yes. uh, book awards for this year it's thank exciting. you uh, all the very best thank, thank you. you sue thanks for the opportunity and thank you everyone for listening